thank you all. I see we have 74 total participants, 63 attendees on right now. So thank you guys for joining us. We're super excited to have you with us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Morgan Falgu. I am the supervisor of the Career Outreach Team, which is a part of Town Acquisition here at Oshner Health. Um, and our team facilitates these great talent talks to let our community know more about the great work going on at Oshner. Um, so I'm excited to have everyone with us today, and I hope you learn a little bit more about this new and exciting um, health center that we're opening in New Orleans East. So first, I would like to go ahead and introduce all of our panelists um, that are going to be speaking today that we're going to be asking questions to. Um, these are our subject matter experts in the field. Um, so first, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our Osher team members that are joining us. So Kim, you want to go first and introduce yourself to all of our call participants. Thank you, Morgan. Hi, I'm Kim Keane. I'm in the Chief Executive Officer for St. Bernard Parish Hospital, and I'm glad to be here and to discuss our new initiative that will be out in New Orleans East. Thank you, Kim. Um, next up, I have Dr. Laborde. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, good afternoon. Thank you, Morgan. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Dr. Evans Laborde. I'm the uh, Medical Director for Global Health um, Education at Oxner. Also serve as assistant professor for um, internal medicine for our UQ clinical school and actively involved in our community outreach and community testing activities. Next up, I have Dr. Wynn. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself? My name is Tom Wynn. I'm a cardiologist here at Baptist. Um, we'll also be rotating throughout uh, with the new health center. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Shannon. Um, next up, we have Rick Mallard. Rick, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rick Mallard, and I uh, currently serve as the Regional Recruitment Manager for Oshner's South Shore Community Facilities and Managed Entities. Uh, so we have a team of seven recruiters that support uh, St. Bernard Parish Hospital, St. Charles Parish Hospital, Oshner Medical Center Kenner, Oshner Medical Center West Bank, and the Oshner Medical Center Clinics located throughout the area, including our new community health center in New Orleans East. Thank you, Rick. Um, so that's all of our excellent panelists from the Oshner team. As you can see, we have a diverse group of leaders that are joining us. They're going to be answering some great questions about the opening of this health center, as well as Oshner's commitment to um, community well-being, specifically in the New Orleans East area. We're really excited about that. Um, and then also joining us is Cindy Wynn, um, council member from District D. We're super excited to have her here. Um, and before we even get into the questions and um, an answer session from our panel. Um, council member wanted to give um, just a brief overview of how excited um, she is for Osher to be coming into the community. So you wanna go ahead, council member Wynn? Well, first of all, um, I just wanted to, to say thank you to the Oshna team for putting this talent talk together. It's unique, uh, but I think it's really cool to, talk, to create an opportunity for potential individuals that may be joining the Oshner team to kind of get to know more about Oshner. The second thing I also wanted to take this opportunity is to thank all of your um, healthcare worker who have been responding to the uh, COVID-19 and making sure that our citizens um, are safe and that they're getting the proper health care. So uh, hats off to you guys for being part of that work in making sure, again, for the city of New Orleans, I know we partner on um, a couple of COVID testing in District E. And so I definitely wanna thank you guys for um, that partnership. But more and more importantly, we're here today is the uh, grand opening of the New Orleans East Oshner Clinic. And I have some thoughts and I, you know, as I prepare my notes for this event, you know, one of the things that before you guys actually decided to build this beautiful clinic, you know, we, the community itself been dealing with blight. Uh, when, you know, when you have blighted property, you have all sorts of unnecessary things that happen. And so with the New Orleans East Ashna Clinic, you guys have helped us remove a large piece of blighted property off of our main corridor, which is off of Bullard. And so I want to thank you for that. Um, another thing I also wanted to thank you guys for is because of your investment. Your investment into our community, you have actually played a role in boosting up excitement and really encouraging other individuals, other groups, other investors 
to invest into the community because nobody wants to go first. And I want to thank you guys for also joining the path of several developments that have been taking place in District E. And, that, and because of that investment, you will help me and my team in the city of New Orleans to continue to attract potential development that's going to improve the quality of life for the families in the East as well as in the city of New Orleans. Access to healthcare uh, for our local residents is really critical. I think in times of COVID-19, we recognize that as uh, firsthand. We are, the, the East is very fortunate to have the New Orleans East Hospital. We are also welcoming you as another healthcare partner in the East to make sure that local residents continue to have local access to, uh, to health care. And I hope that I, um, and I know with New Orleans East Hospital, Ashner, people may say, well, you, they are competitors, but I know that you guys have worked together in partnership, particularly during the time of COVID. And I hope that that partnership will continue as we move our district forward, as we continue to make sure that residents in the community will have the best quality of health care uh, provided in our community. And most importantly, the reason why we're here today is to create access to job opportunities. We just received news yesterday that roughly about 19,000 people that are still unemployed in the state of Louisiana. COVID-19 has created an unexpected, unprecedented of people losing their job. Many people didn't realize that in March that they may potentially lose their job. And so having this opportunity during this time, um, it is extremely powerful and to give many residents in our community the hope and desire that you will be able to get back on track. So with that, um, I wanna thank you for allowing me to be part of this panelist. I am excited to hear from all of the individuals that are on the panelists and definitely would love to get some feedback from those that are participating in this talent talk. So again, thank you very much, Morgan. Yes, no, thank you, Council Member Wynn. Um, we are very grateful to have you here um, and to share your excitement for Oshner joining the community. Um, I really love that you spoke specifically about access to care um, for all of the community members in New Orleans East. Um, we really want to make sure that we're able to provide um, care for that community and be able to give access to um, the New Orleans East region in a way that Osher hasn't been able to do before. Um, so with that, uh, Dr. Wynn, if you can kind of share, I know you have lots of experience working in the New Orleans East community um, as a cardiologist and then now joining the Osher team, if you can kind of share your thoughts about the opening of this health center and what it's gonna do for the community in terms of providing access to critical care resources. Sure, thank you, Morgan. So as you said, um, having served uh, that particular community since 2007, you know, we definitely recognized um, that the community um, deserves uh, accessible and, and comprehensive health care. Um, starting with primary care, uh, we can provide uh, a range of services from um, routine uh, annual health exams to evaluate and treat common conditions, conditions such as high blood pressure, diabetes, hypertension, and then if indicated, the primary care physician can refer to our specialists. Um, for example, if they have a cardiac condition, they can see one of us who can definitely take care, um, uh, evaluating, making the diagnosis and the treatment of any cardiac uh, issues, uh, cardiac diseases such as um, coronary artery disease, uh, peripheral vascular disease like poor circulation, um, or any rhythm disorders. Um, and we're capable of, of um, doing the diagnosis at this new clinic with our new equipment. Um, also, I wanted to mention that uh, during the COVID pandemic, we've also increased our uh, telemedicine visits. So patients who are afraid to come in, um, they have the opportunity to visit a physician uh, by video um, or audio uh, safely from their home. And also with the Oshner, um system, we, um, they have um, digital medicine where patients can, for example, monitor the blood pressure at home and the results are uh, sent directly to their doctor who can adjust the medication as uh, necessary. Um, also within the Oshner system, once they're 
patients are in the Austrian system, they have access to uh, other Austrian system uh, within the region, not just in the state. Oh, thank you. Um, I think that was a great, uh, well-rounded answer of all the great resources that you're going to be able to provide for the region. So thank you um, for that response. Speaking um, of the opening of this community center, Kim, I want to direct this next question to you in terms of how the new community health center is going to be working in partnership with St. Bernard Parish Hospital, which you lead. Thank you, Morgan. Well, St. Bernard Parish Hospital, will, along with Oshner Health, will, will ensure that we are providing comprehensive care. We're going to meet the needs of the community. And if we decide it, that the community has needs for certain specialties, we will add those specialties to the community health clinic. This is a great opportunity to be able to have local access to care. Also, with the close proximity of St. Bernard Parish Hospital, if you need additional testing, you need to have hospitalization, we're here for you and you can remain in the system that um, is able to serve you as, as well as you need and whatever your needs may be. Yeah, I think it's going to be an excellent partnership um, for all of community members in that region. Thank you, Kim. Um, speaking to the opening of the new health center, Dr. Laborde, um, I'm going to address this question to you. With this health center opening, we're going to, you know, we're here to talk about an array of job opportunities um, for those living in the community or those that want to relocate to the community. Can you touch on the benefits for a primary care provider role in this type of setting with Oshner Health, specifically working in community health? Uh, no, thanks, Morgan. Um, that's a really a very good question, and it kind of dovetails to the comments that Dr. Um, Wen made and also that Kim made, um, the fact that this type of an approach where you're able to provide comprehensive um, care um, in a setting whereby you're supported by a system such as Oxygen, who's got a long history of providing comprehensive and integrated care, um, it does open up a significant opportunity for a primary care physician um, who has a desire to be um, a community-based um, physician who has a desire to provide services to an underserved area. Um, so what it does, it opens up a tremendous opportunity for that physician to come and be part of a, a healthcare model that's actually well-established, um, you know, in terms of primary care, our primary care um, system here at Auctioner, it's, it's really, it's a coordinated, integrated care system um, whereby our focus is really patient-centered and so it really provides that physician an opportunity to be connected um, to the services that Oshner provides um, through, again, we have a through our EPIC um, system as well. And so the, the beauty about it is that um, at this point in time, opening up a center like this um, in a community um, such as um, the, the New Orleans East community where there's a significant need, because there are some providers who actually have a desire to provide care community-based care um, in areas that are underserved or under who are in need of access. Um, and so what this does for us, it actually provides us another option for those types of physicians who are committed to, to community and to service um, to become and be part of a really comprehensive, integrated um, primary care service um, practice that has um, all the necessary support system to ensure that they can come um, and be totally focused on doing the thing that they've actually trained to do and that is to focus on the care of um, and the well-being of their patients while we have the um, organizational structure and the support to make sure that they have all the support that they need so that their focus is first and foremost um, taking care of their patients. So again, I'm a little bit advanced in my career, but you know, I have a passion for community care. So if I was early on, this would be an ideal position or role for me to apply for, to be in the East and work with Dr. Than. Good. Uh, no, thank you. And I would definitely say we've talked a lot about access to care, specifically um, for our patients in this community and how they have all the resources of the Oshner Health System. Um, I do, before we want to go into this next question, I'm going to kind of make a shift um, to talk about the culture. But before we jump into it, I just want to remind all of the attendees on the call that you can ask a question down at the bottom of your screen. There's a Q&A option. Um, or you can chat with us, let us know specifically what you want to learn about, um, and then we're going to take those questions at the end. Um, we also have the chat feature up if you want to send a chat, but we recommend just putting your questions in that um, Q&A section so we don't miss it at the end of the call. 
Um, so to kind of transition, as I mentioned, I want to go over culture of the organization and some of the benefits of being an OSHR employee. Um, Kim, I know you've been with the organization for quite some time. Do you want, kind of want to share a little bit of your viewpoint on the overall cu culture of OSHR health and what you find to be a benefit for our employees? Thank you. Yes, I would like to talk about it. Really, the benefits of being an OSHR employee is really endless. And one of the things that I appreciate the most about being an OSHR employee is it really addresses my missions and my values. So you have an opportunity to do things and um, be a lifelong learner, have the opportunities to work in different areas or regions if your personal life changes and you're relocating to another place within um, the state or even outside the state, you can still remain an Oshner employee and have the benefits of all the education that's available. Um, there's opportunities to be part of a larger system, which I think really makes it wonderful so that your mission and your values that you have as an employee, also as a person, you can carry that as being part of a larger system. It is um, nice to be part of that larger system, which was really emphasized in COVID. We all stuck together, we all helped each other, and um, um, it's something that um, makes me proud to be an OSHA employee. Yes, absolutely. Um, and we're going to talk about COVID a little bit later, but I think we've all been able to kind of band together um, during that time uh, to just see the benefits of the organization. And as an employee, just getting that consistent communication. I definitely agree with you. Um, I'd also like to have Shannon answer this question. I think Shannon works in a very unique part of the organization where she's able to really um, assist our employees in growing their career. So Shannon, you kind of want to talk about some of the benefits of being an OSHA employee? Um, specific to career growth and development? Absolutely. So one thing that we're very excited about at OSHA is that we're able to bring in folks at an entry level, but absolutely help them grow through a pathway of employment within our organization. You can come in as a medical assistant and absolutely take advantage of opportunities to become an LPN. Uh, we are looking to grow folks because we're excited about them. We're excited about what they can offer to the organization and being committed to one another in that area of growth. So there, there are absolutely a plethora of opportunities for pathways of growth within the organization. Thank you, Shannon. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about how you can start in an entry level position and grow your career a little bit later on the call with Shannon again. Um, so I want to transition back to COVID. Um, I think that's something that's clearly on many people's mind right now, whether you work in healthcare, whether you're wanting to transition your career to healthcare, it's, um, you know, very current topic and something that we're constantly learning and growing um, how to care for our patients and our employees during this time. Um, I want to direct this question specifically to Dr. Laborde. Um, can you specifically speak to the organization's COVID response and how our frontline heroes are making a huge impact um, on our patients and the community as a whole? Oh, no, thank you, um, um, Morgan. I think um, Kim had actually mentioned about the sense of pride of being part of Oxford. And I think um, our response to the COVID-19 really kind of highlighted um, all the positive and strengths of a system as large as ours and how committed we are to the well-being of the community. Um, so one of the things that's really critically important for us as a system, we really have this motto, at least that I've actually purported, is this idea that global health is local health. And so what this COVID-19 revealed is that um, there really are no borders um, when we think about um, both uh, communicable and non-communicable diseases. And I think Oxford being rather progressive in its thoughts and mindset, it always had a global view of health and really had a fundamental understanding that really diseases do not respect borders. And so specifically um, with COVID-19, um, when it presented, as you all remember, I, I think the first case of COVID-19 was like in March 9th, and then we quickly became um, really a hotspot um, nationally. I think at one point in time, we actually had um, the highest rate of any other um, you know, um, state um, in the country. And so Oxner, what we're able to do in terms of, we're able to mobilize our resources and our forces in such a way um, that we were able to use our strength as a system. Um, first of all, um, on the inpatient side, both our ED and our ICU, um, and as well as the care that we provided within the hospital, 
was structured in such a way that we could accommodate and adjust um, the influx of patients because of the wide specialty care that we provide. And so on the forefront, we were actually um, at one point in terms of the number of ICU patients, we had the most ICU patients in the hospital um, as well on, on the inpatient side as well. We structured, we restructured our ED. Um, and so we're really a focal point where um, the whole community depended on us were able to actually come through um, in that regard. And so once we were actually able to play a significant role in, in, in managing the acute phase, um, then it came back to planning as to how do we use our resources and partner with the community to make sure um, that we continue to contain the virus. And so that's one of the things that um, we've actually been actively involved in is in terms of community perspective, making sure um, that we've actually provided um, support and access for local, local communities that wouldn't necessarily have access to testing. Um, and so back in May, we initiated this community testing um, program. And we've actually done over 60,000 tests. And so we're using our geospatial capabilities that allow us to kind of monitor um, the propagation of the disease and partner with both the state and the city um, so that we could actually target resources and be able to monitor um, increases um, in terms of infectivity rate and hospitalization. So we were, we were able to use all our resources, um, both you know, technical, operational, um, to put that in place to help us really effectively uh, mitigate and manage the propagation of disease. So that's one of the um, significant advantages that we have um, as a health system um, to be able to contribute and, and partner um, in such a way to ensure that um, we make sure that our um, communities and our patients are actually um, optimally cared for. Thank you, Dr. Laborde. Um, I think, you know, you just spoke to the amazing work that the organization has done, um, you know, for the community and then as well as the state to provide access to testing. I know you've had a heavy role in leading that um, specific project. So just really um, grateful for you for doing all of that um, to kind of lead the charge for everyone. Um, so you know, have... kind of to shift. Yeah, so um, I just add one more thing if I could. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so one of the things that people actually realize is the, the, is the extent amount of research um, that we actually do here um, at Oxner. Um, so we actually, in response to COVID, we have 35 um, ongoing clinical trials testing a lot of the new medications and interventions. And in fact, we recently started um, a vaccine trial, the Pfizer mRNA trial. Um, we're actually one of 120 sites that have been chosen worldwide um, to participate um, in that study. So I think that's one of the things that oftentimes um, we're not fully aware of and people are not fully appreciative of the amount of research and work that's being done on the front line, um, front line research is being done um, to, in order to address and, and, and provide progressive cure and, and long-term um, treatment and intervention for the COVID. So just wanted to share that. Yes, um, which I think is an excellent point to add. Um, and thank you for sharing that. We greatly appreciate it um, and all of your expertise. So I'm gonna transition um, a little bit to career, you know, just to transition to career opportunities for everyone joining the call. Um, as council member Wynn stated at the beginning of the call, this is gonna provide not only access to patients, but career opportunities for people living in the New Orleans East region when we open um, this community health center. So Rick, um, I wanna to transition to you and have you answer these questions. Um, what are some of the new career opportunities that'll be available for this specific location? Well, that's a great question, and it's the million-dollar question that uh, we were uh, asking when we were talking about this recently. So, I mean, we are uh, super excited to have this chance to provide new employment opportunities to uh, the New Orleans East community and all of the surrounding communities. Um, our new community health center will have a variety of roles available, whether you're just starting out in your career, uh, seeking the next challenge or path in your current field, or seeking a, a leadership or professional-type role. Uh, we're already actively recruiting for medical assistance and license, licensed social worker opportunities uh, through our career website at auctioner.org backslash careers. Uh, you'll also find nurse practitioner opportunities available if you're seeking an advanced professional nursing opportunity. Recruitment will begin in the coming days and weeks as well for LPN, uh, security officers, patient access representatives. And additional roles will be available, just like Kim mentioned, um, as services and programs expand uh, in the clinic uh, as we move through the fall and into 2021. 
Thank you, Rick. Um, and I know that you're speaking to jobs available at our community health center that's opening um, in the coming months. What about other opportunities available within the region for those looking to join Oshner Health? Oh, of course, and, and there are a lot. <laughs> so there are you know, currently hundreds of roles available for job seekers with various skill ranges uh, and shift preferences, uh, whether you're looking for full-time work, part-time work, uh, PRN work, day shift, night shift, uh, we have a lot available. Um, our neighboring partner facilities uh, to include Slidell Memorial Hospital, Ochsner Medical Center North Shore, Ochsner Health Center Covington, and St. Bernard Parish Hospital are actively recruiting today. Um, roles uh, would include uh, environmental service, dietary services, uh, community uh, clinic temperature checkers, uh, patient access reps, security officers, medical assistants, patient care technicians, patient sitters, licensed practical nurses, and registered nurses as well. Um, and I'm sure you know the question that some of you may have is, uh, how do I apply for one of these opportunities? Uh, it's super easy. Um, job seekers can connect with Auctioner in a variety of ways, um, which I'll just highlight real quick. Um, the first thing you can do uh, if you're out there right now thinking about applying for one of these opportunities, join us for our online virtual career fair. Uh, we'll be getting together uh, next Wednesday, August 19th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And that's where you can actually interface with our facility recruiters and career specialists um, and chat with them one-on-one -on -one about our career opportunities and all of those areas mentioned, plus some other ones that I didn't have the time to mention. You can always follow us on social media. Um, we are very active on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. If you just search careers at Auctioner. You can, again, visit our career page uh, at auctioner.org backslash careers. And the cool thing about that site, uh, you can search uh, jobs by keyword, title, and regional location. Um, so you don't have to scroll through thousands of opportunities. You can really highlight the area you live in and or the role that you would like to fill. And then finally, uh, our chat feature is always available 24 seven, um, where you can chat with a representative from our team. We'll walk you through the application process and a few easy steps. Thank you, Rick. Um, I greatly appreciate that. And just so everyone knows, we're gonna put up more information about the virtual career fair next week at the end of the call. So that way you can um, have access to the link to sign up for it. And we'll drop it in the chat feature. Um, so just wanna go ahead and do, uh, We'll do that later um, once we finish with the panel questions um, and while we're doing the Q&A. So now I want to transition. I think Rick spoke about tons of career opportunities. As you can see at Osher, we're hiring a variety of roles um, at all times across all locations. Um, but I want to go back to Shannon as you talked about beginning your career and coming on and learning an entry level skill and then growing through the organization. Um, can you speak specifically um, to some of the workforce development programs that we have available to those interested in beginning a career in healthcare? Absolutely. Thanks, Morgan. So, yes, we are very excited because our workforce development programming actually it works to connect members of our community to Oster with allied health positions in mind. Uh, we're saying that we look to help to educate and train individuals to become part of the Oshner family, to be able to work in areas, as I mentioned before, like medical assistant, as well as LPN, um, medical lab technicians. We also have opportunities for medical coders, and that's the beginning of opportunities that we look to be able to connect individuals with. And understand, when we're talking about the education and training part of it, it is not only to get you trained but to also ensure that you're in a position to become hired and become a member of the Ashner family. Uh, you will go through training with partnerships that we have within the community, such as Delgado, and literally you walk away with an industry-based credential. Those credentials can assist you not only in employment here in Louisiana, but they carry with them a national transportable piece with them as well. So you can go to work anywhere in the country, but of course we would like for you to, to stay with Ashner and become a integral part of what we do every day. But it's an exciting time for us, uh, building partnerships throughout the community, ensuring that we're getting folks aware of what we do and helping folks to really find 
that niche where they should be and where they're going to be the most happy, not only in their professional careers, but also where we can assist in their growth as well. No, absolutely. Um, I think one of the most um, exciting parts of these workforce development programs is that you're able to get these job readiness skills um, and specific certifications and trainings, like you mentioned, where you could go work anywhere um, and begin your career. And I think that's such a you know, huge benefit and no cost um, to, the, to the individual going through training. Um, what are some of the other incentives though of joining this program? I know there's so much more than just the job training. So one thing I could tell you um, that makes it unique for us, we offer wraparound services within each of our workforce development programs. What that means is we're looking to absolutely attend to the comprehensive needs of our, our participants in our cohorts. And I'll talk a little bit about cohorts in a second. But what happens there is life gets in the way sometimes. Um, we recognize that we have barriers to employment as well as barriers in maintaining employment. One thing about these particular programs are that they are structured in a way that we are able to help alleviate that. You may have an opportunity to receive transportation assistance. Um, there might be needs for things such as uniforms or supportive services. We are ensuring that we, we have availability of social workers to be able to help meet some of the needs that are not traditionally met by an HR organization or HR within an organization. Uh, we want to make sure that we're setting each of our participants up for success in all ways. There's also another benefit, which is the cohort environment in which we, we function. And some could relate it to a buddy system. But what that does it enables our participants to work together with folks who are having the same experience. And we all know that having someone that can share what we're doing sometimes helps us with the flow. So we're excited about that because we have folks who come into a cohort and they need assistance. You can have someone who is there to help you grow in the same journey that you're, you're going on, but we're also excited that once they finish these programs, many of these individuals still have these relationships after they're completed. So when you go to work, you now are in a place where you don't feel like a stranger. You have the ability to be able to have a conversation with someone who knows exactly what you've done to get where you are, as well as someone who is there with you while you're moving through it. So I think it's a, a great opportunity for folks who want to enter into healthcare, have never really thought about how do I do it? Um, I don't have the time to get it done. And, and in all honesty, there's a lot of conversation around money to be able to get it done. We know that finances can absolutely determine which way you go in your career. Well, we're very excited because the majority of our workforce development programs, I will venture to say all of our workforce development programs are debt-free. So you're able to not only get training and education and job placement, but you walk away without owing any debt. And that is something that is substantial in how we move through our, our society and our communities today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can have, you know, just from going through this program, it can change the course of someone's career and eventually, and, you know, essentially affect their entire life. Um, so I really love working with these programs um, and working with your team on all the great work that you do. Um, Shannon, what are some of the requirements though, to enter into these programs and how would somebody go about applying for them? So for us, again, all excitement. If you are 18 years of age, you have a GED or a high school diploma, we're absolutely encouraged and excited about hearing from you. Uh, you can reach us at our workforce development at ashner.org website, I'm sorry, email address to get any questions that you might have. And I'll also say this, as we begin to recruit for external programs, 
We are present on Facebook. We are present on Instagram, LinkedIn, and every opportunity we can to be able to share with you what our partners are doing to help us get these programs going and how we're doing our recruitment, the where, whens, and the how. So we are more than excited about anyone who has those basic, basic credentials to be able to come out and, and have conversations with us about what availability exists. So we're excited. And if you're willing to learn within the group environment and you're ready to commit to allied health opportunities, we're here to have the conversation. Yeah, and I think that's fantastic. And kind of as you mentioned, um, you become very active when we're recruiting for a cohort. So um, as Rick mentioned earlier, we're going to have a career fair next week, but that will also be a great time for you to let us know if you're interested in learning about workforce development programs in the future so that way we can make sure our team connects you Um to Shannon and her team so that you can attend one of these information sessions and then apply in the future. Um, so thank you, Shannon. Um, so that wraps it up for all of my questions for our panelists. Um, it's been really enlightening to have you guys here. Y'all are such a diverse group, but you've been able to share some phenomenal insights, um, about, specifically about the opening of this new community health center and then the, you know, Osher, um starting in the, New or in the New Orleans East region to bring into this type of community total wellness um, for all of the community members living in that region. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, and as Rick mentioned, if you're wanting to join the team, um, whether it's at this location or join Oscar as a whole, we'll be hosting a virtual career fair next Wednesday. Uh, August 19th. It's going to be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can sign up. We're going to drop the link um, to sign up in the chat box. Um, and I'm going to share that information as well while we start to go through the questions. So I'm going to share my screen in just a second. But it's a great opportunity for you to connect with our team members. We're going to be featuring jobs specifically for this location, but you'll also have the opportunity to connect with recruiters about other offshore jobs, as well as team members of the career outreach team. If you want to talk a little bit about career planning, not sure what your next step should be in healthcare, we'll be accessible for you to answer those questions. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen. So just give me a second. And then we're going to jump into the questions, um, the Q&A. We've gotten a lot of great questions um, from all of our participants. Peace. And now we're going to get into our Q&A. And let me kind of go through the questions and see, um, I did wanna mention there was a question initially um, about the projected opening date of the clinic. And Kim, I don't know if you wanna take that and answer that question. Absolutely, Morgan. The projected opening is October 5th, but we'll be hiring before that, so we need to be ready to go on October 5th. So if there are jobs that you're interested in, please apply now. Um, because we will be working on orientation and making sure you're ready for the opening. But uh, October 5th is the opening date. Yes, thank you, Kim. Um, um, I'm going to direct this question to Dr. Laborde. Um, and because this is specifically about uh, primary care providers. So it says, how will you work with other healthcare providers in the New Orleans East community who are also providing primary care? Well, um, so at, at our, our approach to this, as it was commented before, we want to be able to partner with everyone to be able to provide the optimal care um, to the people who live in the New Orleans East. So if there are other, um, primary care practices um, that are over there. Um, you know, our focus is first and foremost um, to collaborate. If there's services that they um, need from us, um, you know, we're able to share and partner with them in any which way um, that we possibly can. Because ultimately the goal is to be able to um, provide access. And so the more um, providers that we have in the region that are willing to collaborate and partner with us, um, the better it is um, for the um, inhabitants of the community. So we're looking forward to working with everyone. <laughs> no, I love that answer. And I think um, you kind of just speak to the community care approach that Austin's really taking with the opening of this health center. Thank you. 
Um, we do have a question um, specifically. This is from um, a participant who is a licensed medical tech um, and a nursing student. So she's interested specifically in opportunities for allied health positions or part-time positions for students. Rick, can you speak to that right now? I mean, again, Morgan, uh, you know, we have a lot of opportunities out there, and I think the best way to go about it, um, you know, is really just to uh, not wait, jump in and, and get connected with our team, um, whether that's through our uh, online, uh, you know, chat feature that's available 24-7. Um, certainly join us at the uh, career fair next Wednesday. Um, or just to uh, apply for an opportunity, and one of the recruiters from our team will be in touch. Um, uh, you know, we work with students all of the time, have a lot of flexibility in our schedules, and like to, uh, you know, provide that support. Um, again, you know, we, we're hiring um, not just for this clinic, um, but we're hiring everywhere, and we're hiring for the long haul, um, not just to get us through, uh, to Kim's point, uh, October 5th. Um, we're going to be here and we're not going anywhere. Um, that's one of the hallmarks, I would say, of Auctioner is that we've committed um, to being here and we've continued to operate under very, very difficult circumstances. Um, so now is the time to do it. Uh, don't wait to uh, jump right in, connect with our team and all of the ways that we talked about and we will connect you, um, you know, to the right team based on the area that you're interested in working in and uh, see where we go from there. Thank you, Rick. Um... I appreciate that. And then this is another question specifically about openings. Um, will there be openings for pharmacy technicians and laboratory techs um, for the specific site? And this may be a Rick and Kim answer, um, but Rick, if you kind of want to go ahead and start. Yes, certainly. I mean, what I can speak to uh, for those roles in particular is that we are hiring uh, across the South Shore right now for those roles. Um, you know, not necessarily for this clinic. I'll let Kim speak to that, whether that's, you know, in our future plan. Um, but we definitely have uh, opportunities and, and those particular ones may be something that we'll be looking at in the not too distant future. I agree, I agree with Rick. Right now we'll be looking at that, but um, I do know that there's opportunities at St. Bernard Parish Hospital for those positions. So, and across the, of course, the South Shore region. So more to come as we assess the needs of New Orleans East Clinic. Thank you, Kim. Um, and then we have another question from an Osher RN who's joining us on the call. Um, hi, Ray, I see your question. Um, congratulations on finishing your nurse practitioner program. Um, we will have roles open um, for advanced practice providers. That will be going through our professional staff services team. So we'll be happy to connect you after the call. Um, but welcome to a fellow Oshner employee. Let me just see if we have any more questions. Um, I will say there's lots of comments, Shannon, of people that are interested in learning about workforce development and that they're gonna be reaching out and connecting with you. So definitely seeing a lot of excitement there. Um, so this is a great question and I'll direct this one to you, Shannon. Um, we have uh, Roxana joining saying, good evening. I have years of experience in the dental field. How difficult or easy would it be for me to transition to medical and receive consideration for a position? Um, and I would direct that to you because I think, you know, it might be a great opportunity for somebody to go through a job training. Absolutely. And she, I'm sorry, in the question, the beginning of the question was she has what type of training? Experience in the dental field. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we have thought about extensively how we can transition skill sets. If she has a, and I'm, I'm sorry, maybe she or he, I apologize, um, but if you have previous experience in a dental office, you absolutely would be able to transition. Um, you have what we'd be looking for, especially as it relates to customer service and being able to assist patients uh, in our medical assistant field, as well as patient care technician or patient access rep with some additional opportunities for training, there's absolutely opportunity for an individual with those skill sets as they come into the organization. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Shannon. And absolutely, and I know Rick could probably speak to transferable skills um, of a role like that. Do you want to jump in, Rick? Mm -hmm. 
You read my mind, Morgan. I was just going to say, you know, there may be opportunities that uh, we could uh, consider you for right now. Um, again, you know, uh, reaching out to our team and getting in touch with a recruiter would be the first step. But um, to, you know, just like Shannon said, a lot of the skills that you already possess, um, you know, working with patients on a day-to-day -day basis and understanding how to manage your time, um, understanding just the, you know, the, the ebbs and flows of, of life serving patients. Uh, instantly transferable skills. Um, and there are definitely a lot of roles, some of which that we uh, speak, uh, that I spoke about earlier, that don't require any particular certification. And, and Shannon and the workforce development team do a fantastic job of, of connecting you to those certifications when you need them for a particular role as you advance in your career. Um, so again, you know, it's just a matter of checking out the careers page. What are you interested in doing? And, and look at those job descriptions. Um, and then again, that chat feature is available to ask questions of our career outreach reach specialists that can tell you, hey, yeah, you're perfect. You're already qualified for this job. Let's talk more about it. Or these are the things that, that we would like to see um, to, to consider you for a different type of role. And that's where we uh, connect you with workforce development. Thank you, Rick. Um, and then I just have one more question. Um, I think it took off my video, um, but I just have one more question that we're going to answer and then anyone else that we weren't able to answer in the q and I'm going to stay on and type out the answer so we can connect with you after. Um, but there's a question that says, um, I'm very interested in working for an organization that's committed to diversity and inclusion. Can you share a little bit about Oshner Health's commitment to diversity and inclusion? And this specifically really speaks to me. So I'll kind of start my answer. And then obviously some of the panelists may want to join in. Um, I've really been impressed with the organization and the commitment that we've made um, over the past few months to increase awareness around diversity and inclusion. We've hired a vice president of diversity and inclusion, Deborah Grimes, who's been a fantastic addition to the organization. She's started right at the end of February um, and has been with us and has already making great strides of adding to her team. Um, we're bringing on new directors of regional diversity recruitment for all of our campuses to help support those diversity initiatives and training. We also have incredible Oshner resource groups for our diverse um, employees to join or if you're an advocate of one of the resource groups to help um, support the group's mission. i have been actively involved in several of those and I cannot speak to how great of an impact it's made for me as an offshore employee. Um, so really tons and tons of great work around diversity and inclusion and the organization is completely committed to continuing to bring training to our employees um, and support a diverse work culture here at Oshner. Did any of the panelists want to chime in on that? Um, I know we all have that experience since we're Oshner employees. Well, absolutely, Morgan. And I, I want to speak to especially with the ORGs, our organizational resource groups. Um, I have the pleasure of serving as vice president of our ABLE group, which is our African American group here at Oshner. And I can honestly tell you it is both rewarding as well as it brings about opportunity for growth within the organization and understanding folks who we work with in all diverse manners. And I, I, I can say nothing more than it's a great opportunity and uh, our DNI and i efforts are very strong here at Oshner and I'm very proud of that. Yes, absolutely. And I do just want to make a clarification. Um, Deborah Grimes is the chief officer of diversity and inclusion here, um, not a vice president. So, um, and she runs that whole office. So I apologize. I misstated her title. Um, and I don't think we're going to be able to answer more questions since we're short on time, um, but I want to just thank everyone for joining us here today. Um, as I said, our team will stay live and kind of go through the questions and make sure that everyone um, who's joined us today we're able to connect with and get next steps for resources following this um, again we really really thank you for being an active and engaged bunch and again big thank you to our panelists for all of your subject matter expertise on these various topics um, it was such a pleasure working with y'all um, and we're super excited to see um, who joins our virtual career fair next week and we're hoping to connect with you then thank you, thank you.